close your eyes. Start with thoughts of goodwill. A wish for your own happiness, a wish for the happiness of others. A wish to find happiness in a way that your happiness doesn't conflict with that of others. Meditation is one of the ways you do that. Generosity, virtue, those are also ways in which you do that. As the Buddha once said, discernment begins with the question, but when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness. Realizing that long-term welfare and happiness has to depend on not harming anybody else. Because if, if your happiness harms them, they're not going to stand for it. They're going to do what they can to destroy your happiness. But if your happiness is entirely harmless, and if it comes from within, nobody has to know about it. You don't have to show anything. As John Lee once said, anyone knows what the good things you've got, you're not safe. So you've got to make sure that you don't show them. But the happiness is there. And that's what matters. So cultivate your resources inside. This is how you show goodwill for yourself and for other people. Because the meditation is not truly an intellectual exercise. We do it in the context of being generous and being virtuous as well. And the lessons we've learned from generosity, the lessons we've learned from virtue, will help us in our meditation. There's a place where the Buddha once said where if you're stingy, you can't even get into the jhanas to say nothing about getting to the higher attainments. So think about that. What do you learn from generosity? What do you learn from virtue that you can apply to developing your own mind? A lot of it has to do with goodwill. When you're generous in the right way, you give gifts that don't harm anybody. They don't harm you. In other words, you're not overextending yourself. And they don't harm the person who's receiving them. You're not placing undue burdens on that person. And at the same time, they don't harm anybody else. And it's still possible to find happiness that way. Part of it, of course, lies in learning to talk to yourself about what a good thing it is that you're doing. That increases the happiness. Which means when you're sitting down to meditate, pay attention to how you're talking to yourself. How you learn how to appreciate the areas in the body that are comfortable, that are okay, and learn how to make the most of that. The same with virtue. You learn how to take joy in the fact that you're not harming anybody. And then you look at the way you meditate. Make sure that you talk to yourself in a way that doesn't harm yourself. So there's a lot of lessons to be learned from being generous, being virtuous, that then apply to the mind. And as we practice all these things together, then our practice is complete. We develop all aspects of the heart and mind. It is because they're developing together that they're all healthy. It's like exercising. You want to make sure you exercise all the muscles in your body so that they help one another. If one set of muscles is really strong and everything else is weak, that pulls the body out of alignment. It's bad for everybody. And same with the good qualities in the mind. You want to develop the good qualities all around, your generosity, your virtue, and your meditation. And that way your mind is in line with the Dharma.